Shalom, y'all, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Yasharala. Call Halayim Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Harakah Kodash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth, so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwaf that's keeping the faith in the works. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from Yahweh our power. All right, so here we are in the land of our captivities and they constantly bamming us up with us having to pay things, right? Because when we ruled, um, when we had our own government, our own uh, society, you know, we weren't worried about no funds, you know, because all of us took care of each other. Really, that's what tithes are about. When you read about it in the scriptures, the tithes were for the people, for the, um, um, for the widows and, you know, those that... They weren't able to, you know, to um, take care of themselves. The tithes would go to the to the priest, and the priest would distribute it to the people. All right, but you know, we in um, so called 2022 in the daughter of Babylon, where they practice Babylonian Christ Christianity. So those rules don't apply. <laughs> All right, but like Script just said, we here and we subject to payments, and the people that we are paying. Right, let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Just to see about the mindset of the individuals that we have to pay. Right, um, it says, Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies. Let's pause right there. The mindset of the individuals that you have to pay, so called black man, so called Hispanic man, so called Native American man, and all our brethren around the world, all of so called Negro descent, are your enemies. All right, start that over. Deuteronomy 28 48. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Yahweh shall bring up a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand a nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old nor show favor to the young All right so yeah they'll hike up some prices on gas and food and everything else but guess what the amount of money that you get paid and when you go into your your own um, plantation and you work for an individual making them billions upon trillions of dollars you still getting paid the same amount and you're just going to have to do what you're going to have to do in order to keep up with the with the inflation. Right. That's why they're not shaking in their boots when they say, well, you know, we're going to have to raise taxes here. or We're going to have to throw sanctions on these. But they're not worried about that for real, for real, because they're straight. The people that need to be worried about it is us. Right. Um, let me see. All right, so let me let this video play and I'll be back. As prices that, as you mentioned, experts warn could climb even higher. Before we get to those experts, while some energy corporations are already making huge changes as a result of this crisis in Ukraine, um, energy corporations like Shell Gas Station, uh, we're at this gas station in Hollywood, and they announced today that they're going to stop buying Russian oil with the ongoing crisis. So that's a huge, huge change in the way they do business. President Biden is hoping that this ban by the U.S. puts more of a strain on Russia's economy. Putin's war is already hurting American families at the gas pump. Since Putin began his military buildup on Ukrainian borders, just since then, the price of the gas at the pump in America went up 75 cents. He said that Putin is the cause of gas going up 75 cents. But who is the individual? Who are the people that are putting sanctions on these people? Niggas ain't, them niggas ain't sanctioning themselves. Right? 
So it ain't that it ain't his fault. It's y'all fault. Putting your nose in things that do not belong to you in business that is not yours. Right? But we all understand this is part of a bigger agenda, man. This really ain't all, all this ain't number smoke screen, bro. They moving into a new world and what must happen for this new world to be able to operate, they gotta crash this dollar in order to bring in what they finna bring in. Right? Look up transhumanism, where they merge computer with man. Look up central digital currency. Right? What they doing away with the paper dollar and everything's going digital. Can't make none of this up, man. Look up the RFID microchip. Can't make none of this up. Right? But these individuals, man, these are devils, bro. Devil simply means deceiver. They liars. Right? And with this action, it's going to go up further. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home. In coordination with our partners, we've already announced that we're releasing 60 million barrels of oil from our joint oil reserves. Half of that, 30 billion, million, excuse me, is coming from the United States. Mm. The president made clear that America will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. He said this ban will deliver, quote, a powerful blow to Russia's ability to fund its offensive. But as you heard the, the president say, gas prices will definitely rise in the U.S. And for weeks now, well, gas prices all across the country, including here in California, have skyrocketed. The president cautioned against price gouging and also exploiting consumers. Now, experts, they don't see any immediate relief at all. All in sight, drivers are currently paying $5.52 for a gallon of regular unleaded. That's a nine-cent jump from yesterday. Doesn't seem like much, but for weeks now, well, it's been adding up. So that means someone with a typical mid-sized sedan with a 14-gallon sized fuel tank is paying about 24 bucks more to fill up that same tank today compared to last year this time. What are the implications of the president's announcement today? We don't know. I mean, the bottom line is, is we cannot predict how high these prices are going to go or when. Fluctuations in gas prices truly depend on the crude oil prices, and right now they are under some pretty heavy stressors. You also said, though, there's a record that was broken today. The national average is now 417 for a gallon of regular unleaded, and that broke the uh, previous record uh, set back in July of 2008. Of course, here in California, we're already paying well above the national average. And so while we've been delivering some discouraging news in our reports as to the fact that gas prices could go up probably significantly in the in the weeks to come, there is some good news uh, for consumers, some tips on how they can save at the pump. So we'll be having that uh, information from our expert coming up in later shows. All right. So as she said, um, it done went up so much since last year, right? And you know what's what's the crazy thing? <laughs> the men of the Lord was telling y'all it's going to happen, right? Myself included. We were telling y'all it's going to happen, man, right? I can remember me vividly saying out there in the highways and hedges, right, when when gas was, uh, what, $3 and... Uh, I think it was like three twenty or something like that. When y'all see the gas go up, <laughs> just know we said it first, and here it is. It's happening, right? But when the gas was all cheap and you know they was uh, lifting up restrictions and everything, you know what I mean? Everything was quote unquote going back to normal, and we told y'all that too. It's not going back to normal. This is the new normal. How many times do, do your oppressors got to tell you? This is the new normal. The old world that you used to is dead and gone. And they not going back to that no more. They moving towards something brand new. Right? This is the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 21. It says, Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth sword famine and great confusion all right that great confusion y'all you seeing it 
One minute you think things sweet, next minute it here goes something else. Then that that thing somewhat passes or fades to the back, and then something else comes. Right? The most I told y'all it was gonna happen, and he sent the men of the Lord out there to prepare the people, but the people don't want to listen. They want to do their own thing. Right? It's the book of um First Thessalonians. Chapter 5 and verse 3 it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right? That's that's just is what it is, man. Right? It's gonna be chaotic event after chaotic event after chaotic event until ultimately you lead to the third world war and they Full out in battle. Ain't, ain't no question about who gonna join what. It's a full battle. Then come Shiloh. Right? But until then, ain't no more peace and safety, man. Them days gone. It really never was peace and safety in this place for Israel. For real, for real. We were just under the, the delusion that we were uh, safe and um, operating in peace. But behind closed doors, them people were making all kind of laws. Um, pertaining to us, and they were making all kind of moves pertaining to the end of this world and moving into the new. We just didn't know it, right? But the Spirit of the Lord had to let us know, hey, man, guard, hey, hey, get yourself right, gird up your loins, right, because I'm about to visit this earth, and I'm going I'm to pick out a select few of y'all with this knowledge of truth, with the spirit of holiness, and I want y'all to go out into the highways and hedges and be a light into the world. And let them know, warn them that these things are about to happen, right? And we did it. And we continue to do so, doing it now, right? But these things must come to pass. Um, let me go to the book of Second Ezra. These things have to come to pass in order for peace to really come. Real peace. I ain't talking about that falsified. Real peace. In order for real peace to come, chaos got to happen. Right? But it's divinely organized chaos, man. Esau think he doing it, but it ain't him. It's the most high. Because the most high controls, man. He controls your steps, your thoughts, the words that you speak. All of that come from the Lord. Right? But this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 15, and um, verse 18. It says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Right? That lack of bread going to come from where? Famine. That famine going to come from where? Not being able to go and buy. And it's only going to get worse and worse and worse, like I said earlier. Look up CBDC. Look at what they're doing to the dollar, man. Look at what they're doing to the economy, all right? Something happening. And we're telling you what's happening, all right? So you need to take heed. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we're not worried about it because we are operating in the spirit of truth to the best of our ability. We're praying that the Most High don't take His Holy Spirit away from us. And we're praying in faith, right? We're praying in faith that the Most High blesses us to maintain all right, and through faith we believe it's so. All right, so this is the book of Isaiah. Let me see. This is Isaiah chapter 60 and uh, verse 5. It says, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall shoot forth the praises of Yahweh. All right, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking beyond this place and beyond the, the turmoil of this place, and we're seeing that them same individuals, the same individuals that was doing all that plotting and planning, guess what they're going to be doing when Shiloh come? They're going to be bringing us all of their goods and their men, right? For servitude, right? It's for us. This world was made for us, right? And what we're witnessing now is the rise of us and the demise of the enemy, the demise of evil. 
I'm going to end with this. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4. And um, verse 24 says, Like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from power. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. And that's what we're witnessing now. We're witnessing the end of this dude's kingdom. He can't even see it. He really do believe that he finna, you know, dodge a bullet. But, nah, it don't work like that. The most high word is true. He's not a man that he should lie. If he says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Just wait for it. All right, so with that, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Ratazah, these precepts in this video were uh, edifying. Call Halloim Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Harakakodash. Shalom, Yahshalom.